Hey guys, welcome back to Base to May. Who would have thought we were gonna get this kind of buildup to Drickus Duplessis versus Sean Strickland that takes place at UFC 297? And the seasonal press conference did such a great job. The fact that the UFC did the seasonal press conference, it really it really helped build that Sean Strickland versus Drickus Duplessis fight that takes place next month, man. Because yes. Volkanovski versus Taporia, already a very exciting fight. I felt like the press conference, they didn't do a, like a super great job of really building up to that fight. Neither did Sean O'Malley or Chito Vera. I mean, they were chirping back and forth, but nothing really substantial. But really, the highlights of that seasonal press conference that the UFC had last week was Drickus Duplessis versus Sean Strickland, which I did not see coming, man. I know Drickus Duplessis is a class act. You know, I know he is good on the mic. I didn't think he was this good on the mic. And we know Sean Strickland. We know this guy, you know, no filter. He's a talker. He loves being in these press conferences. He loves to talk shit. He says whatever's on his mind. And we love him for it. But, you know, I didn't expect this kind of buildup against Drake is Duplessis, right? Because they have a common enemy. I think the fact that we assume that they would be friends because they have a common enemy, that being Israel Asanya, we thought, oh, okay, you know, this is you know, this is the formal thing. Drake is Duplessis is next. You're in a title shot. He beat Robert Whitaker in July. He didn't get that title shot because he was injured. Sean Strickland, you know, stepped in on short notice, was able to pull the huge upset against Israel Asanya. You know, Israel Drake is Duplessis and Sean Strickland, that's the formal thing to do. They're going to have a nice, you know, they're really not going to talk that much shit. You know, it's going to be as respectful as it gets. You know, maybe Sean Strickland will chirp here and there, but it's not going to get nasty. <laughs> we were so wrong. We were so wrong. Because now... At that seasonal press conference, you know, they were going back and forth. You know, Sean Strickland was saying, hey, man, we'll see if Robert Whitaker is that good, man. Maybe I could have knocked out Robert Whitaker. We'll see if you're actually that good. You know, Sean Strickland brings up the fact that, you know, Drake is Duplessis was scared to fight Israel Adesanya because, you know, he, you know, from our perspective, we saw that we really didn't see Drake is Duplessis take any damage against Robert Whitaker. And, you know, why didn't Drickus Duplessis step in to fight Israel Asanya, you know? And Sean Strickland was kind of pushing on that. He was kind of poking at, at Drickus Duplessis because of that. But then Drickus had an amazing comeback, which he said, hey, you know, if it wasn't for that, you wouldn't have been fighting for the title because you were ranked number seven and you would have had to fight other contenders ranked above you and you were probably not going to win. So it was your only opportunity that you were ever going to get to fight for the title. And yeah, you were able to pull an upset and even Drake has called it a fluke, which I don't agree with. I mean, I know his right son didn't show up on his best, but I still think that Sean Strickland's, you know, fundamental, his boxing fundamentals and his pressure was a kryptonite to his right son. And I think... He could have still been successful with the past Israel Asanya, maybe not Gaino Israel Asanya, but it still proved to not be a fluke. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't a fluke, in my opinion. Sean Strickland did what he had to do, and it's not like he landed this lucky punch and he was losing the fight, and, you know, it kind of stunned, and it was an early stop. It's okay, I'd call it a fluke. You know what I'm saying? But Drake is still right in the fact that Sean Strickland would have never fought for the title. If it wasn't for the fact that he wasn't going to be able to make the date and based on the fact that he was the only guy available to fight Israel Asanya, you know what I'm saying? And that's completely true. And, you know, Sean Strickland was kind of taken aback by that. Sean Strickland, he was throwing a lot of like, you know, gay insults. Uh, he was making a lot of gay jokes about Drake is Duplessis uh, because Drake is Duplessis coach grabbed uh, <laughs> DDP's. Crotch. I'm not gonna go too into detail because I don't want to get uh, you know, demonetized, and and I don't want to say what some of the things that Sean Strickland was saying in the press conference. But he was saying the f word. He was calling him gay. He was throwing all those kinds of insults. And for the most part, Drake Duplessis, you know, was staying composed. He wasn't really clapping back that much. You know, he would say one or two comments here and there, up until he got tired of it and he said, "I'm gonna beat you up." Like how your dad used to beat you up. And I'm going to be a nightmare. And I, I don't remember the exact line that he said. But it was pretty cold. 
And you could tell in Sean Strickland's demeanor, it quickly changed. He quickly went from like, ha, 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 to like, he looked at him and he looked pissed off. Like it really, and Drake is duplicy realized that he had hit a nerve. He's like, oh, I hit a nerve there. And Sean Strickland goes, yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. I'm going to take your soul. And it was crazy, man. It, it crazy and i was like wow and when they did the face off there was some real intensity you know usually with sean strickland there's like this awkward face off you know what i'm saying it's kind of playful maybe he's throwing jokes here and there but nothing like this like the fight has become so much more exciting and in fact it is my most anticipated fight of early 2024 i mean i know there's only three main events announced but out of those three I'm more excited for Drake's Duplessis versus Sean Strickland because I think it's going to be a fantastic fight. It's a very competitive fight. Um, I'm definitely leaning Drake's Duplessis, not even because of these comments, but I just think stylistically he has more power. His pressure might be a problem. He has the grappling in his back pocket. You know, even though Sean Strickland put that kind of performance against Israel Adesanya, you know, we've seen Sean Strickland win some, lose some. You know, he had that close fight with Jerry Cannonier, even though I thought he won. You know, he lost to Alex Pereira, you know what I'm saying? So it's not like Sean Strickland has been on this crazy uh, win streak. And even prior to his Rod Asanya, let's be honest, like Abu Namagomedov didn't deserve that opportunity to fight a ranked fighter. And yeah, Sean, what Sean Strickland did to Abu was impressive, but, you know, it wasn't a ranked win. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't really a ranked win. So... On paper, I think Drake is Duplessis should win this fight. But who knows, right? Because you know what they say. When somebody becomes champion, their confidence is, all, you know, they, they gain more confidence. And that might help Sean Strickland be more confident in his ability. And he he might be better. I, I think we're going to get the best version of Sean Strickland against Drake is Duplessis. We're about to get, I mean, I think we, uh, Drake is Duplessis has shown that he's a lot better than we thought he was. Especially... You know, I gave him a lot of shit before that Robert Whitaker. I was like, Drake is Duplessis. He sucks. He looked like a, he's just a, uh, he's just a brawler. He reminded me a little bit of Paulo Costa. I didn't think too too highly of his performance against Derek Brunson, and then I didn't think too highly of his performance against Darren Till. And yeah, even though he was on this on this really good win streak, I, I didn't think too much of his performances up until he fought Robert Whitaker. And you know, maybe. Who knows, right? Because I I do think we're going to find out how good Drake's Duplessis is in this fight. Because, you know, Robert Whitaker, you know, he's never had the best chin. He likes to be in a pretty fight. He's a technical fighter. Robert Whitaker has no power. We really haven't seen his grappling get tested all that much. And Drake's Duplessis is the complete opposite. You know, Drake's Duplessis is all pressure, all power, great grappler. And we saw Drake's Duplessis be able to expose Robert Whitaker in those elements. And, you know, we still have to see, okay, how good is Drake's Duplessis against these top strikers? You know what I'm saying? Sean Strickland, good boxer, also pressure fighter. He is a bit more measured, doesn't throw a lot of kicks. And so it's going to be very exciting, right? Because Sean Strickland is going to be moving forward. Drake's Duplessis is going to be moving forward. It's going to be a car crash. I don't see this fight going the distance, to be honest. I just think Drake's Duplessis style doesn't lend itself to go the distance so i'd be very surprised if that fight goes the distance it might be a scrap i could see drake is tagging him on the feet you know going to his grappling i could see sean strickland landing good combinations with his boxing on drake's duplicy especially if drake starts to gas out a little bit later um we ha I have not I haven't seen Drake's Duplessis fight a five round fight, so it's gonna be very interesting to see. We know Sean Strickland has amazing cardio, so Guys, Drakus Duplessis is an absolute genius. He's a genius, and he's everything that I want from an MMA fighter. He's everything that I want from a UFC fighter. Somebody that is classy, great fighter, great win streak, smart with his comebacks. Not like Colby Covington, who just says a bunch of insults that make absolutely no sense and has CTE. At least Drake is Duplessis, like, when he talks trash, it comes out more natural, comes out more cold. There's a real confidence to what Drake is says, and Kobe is just a stupid-ass character, and I know that right now. It's kind of easy to shit on Kobe Covington, but really, the Kobe Covington's press conference was the day before the seasonal press conference, and the difference between Drake is and Kobe Covington couldn't be more, like, clear, you know what I'm saying? Like, Drake is was also talking shit, but it was, like, actually intense. It was good trash talk. Kobe Covington and Leon, well, one, Leon is not a guy that talks trash, so it's just 
pretty much Kobe Covington throwing insults, and that, that doesn't make it fun to watch, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? And Kobe Covington is just like a character made for 13 year old kids that play Call of Duty. You know what I'm saying? And while Drake is, seems more like a class act, like, yeah, he's not boring on the mic, but he doesn't overdo it. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't overdo it. And I just think Drake is Duplessis and Sean Strickland have done such a great job of promoting this fight. And I know that for Sean Strickland, this is real beef. And I think for Drake is Duplessis, it's more like a playful. Like he knows he's getting to Sean Strickland and he's messing with him. And then not only did the seasonal press conference help, but I'm sure you guys are all, all aware that they got into a scrap at UFC 286 in the arena where they were sitting pretty close to each other and you know they were kind of messing with each other kind of like saying things to each other and eventually sean strickland you know told gilbert burns family to move out of the way and they started going and attacking each other and they had to be separated by security all of that is beautiful for the ufc i'm sure they're happy about it i know dana was like no we don't want fights in the arena so i'm very unprofessional but i'm sure he's loving it He's loving it because it's going to make that fight in January a lot bigger. And this is what happens, UFC. This is what happens when you do the right thing and you give the right guys their deserved title shots. This is what happens. You know what I'm saying? Look, look what happened with Kobe and Leon. Kobe didn't deserve that title shot. He goes out there and fights and he looks atrocious. It puts one of the worst fights in the UFC, in my opinion. It was terrible. Well, not the, one of the worst fights, but one of the worst performances by a fighter in a title fight. Kobe Covington is definitely up there. And now Drake is Duplessis versus Sean Strickland is a lot bigger than we all expected. I cannot wait for this fight, guys. I'm sure you guys are also very excited. Let me know what you guys think of this whole Drake is Duplessis versus Sean Strickland. It came out of nowhere, right? We didn't expect the buildup to this fight to be that great. And I just cannot wait, guys. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.